हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग हिस्टेरिस मोटर सम ऑफ द सिंगल फेज इंडक्शन मोटर्स हैविंग स्पेशल रोटर कंस्ट्रक्शन कैन रन एट सिंकन स्पीड ड्यू टू देयर स्पेशली फैब्रिकेटेड रोटर्स एंड देयर इनहेरेंट प्रॉपर्टीज दीज टाइप ऑफ सिंगल फेज मोटर्स आर नोन एज सिंगल फेज सिंक्रोनस मोटर्स In the previous video, we have discussed reluctance motors in detail, and particularly in this video, we are going to discuss hysteresis motor. Now, talking about the construction of hysteresis motor in detail, let's discuss about its stator first. The stator winding of a hysteresis motor is similar to that of a single phase induction motor, so as to produce a rotating magnetic field. The stator windings for single phase hysteresis motor is similar to that of a permanent capacitor split phase winding for larger sizes and to that of the shaded pole type for smaller sizes. In shaded pole structure the size is less hence cost also is very less and torque produced is also less. Whereas if we go for permanent capacitor split type structure the value of capacitor is so chosen that almost a balanced two phase operation is achieved at the synchronous speed since we are getting the balanced two phase supply so the torque produced is quite uniform resulting in very silent operation and since we are using an additional capacitance so size increases and also the cost increases whereas the rotor of the hysteresis motor is concerned it is a smooth cylinder consisting of a hysteresis ring made up of magnetically hard chrome or cobalt steel having very large area of cross section area and very large hysteresis loop the hysteresis ring is mounted on a magnetic uh, sorry non magnetic spider of aluminium to make the rotor light as shown in the figure The circumference of rotor is smooth without any slots and hence without any rotor windings. This is how the hysteresis motor looks in actual. Now talking about the working principle of hysteresis motor, it is based on BH loop of the magnetic material. At point 1, the magnetic field intensity H is 0, but flux density B is finite and negative. further you can see the magnetic flux density b is zero at the point 2 where magnetic field intensity h is finite and positive so we saw that the magnetic flux density b lags behind the magnetic field intensity h by a small angle delta so if the stator winding produces rotating magnetic mmf wave fs then the induced flux density b in the rotten iron body must lag behind the rotating mmf wave fs by a small angle delta now carefully observe the figure in which stator of the motor is wound for two poles and the rotating mmf of the stator has two poles rotating in air gap at synchronous speed omega s radian per second the axis of stator poles and induced mmf wave fs is taken as vertical the magnetic flux density b produced due to this rotating mmf vector fs lags by it by an angle delta so the rotor poles induced due to this magnetic flux density also lags behind the mmf vector fs being cofacer with flux density due to hysteresis and axis of two fields are shown in the figure note that the angle delta between stator pole axis and the rotor pole axis depends only on the hysteresis loop of the magnetic material and not on the rotor speed or the speed at which the hysteresis loop is being traversed so the torque developed by the hysteresis motor due to this hysteresis property remains constant from standstill to the synchronous speed here a question may come to your mind that will delta not change with the loading condition the answer to this is since the relative speed between the stator and rotor mmf is zero the delta will be constant irrespective of the loading condition
Now keep in mind that although the rotor body is made up of high resistivity steel to reduce eddy current, some of the eddy currents are also induced in the rotor body due to the relative speed between the rotor body and the rotating magnetic field. So torque is produced due to this eddy currents also. Now let us see the torque produced by the hysteresis motor. Firstly, at standstill where slip is equal to 1, the rotor iron is subjected to magnetic reversals at a frequency of supply frequency F. Let the hysteresis loss in the rotor at standstill be pH0. As the rotor accelerates and picks up speed, the frequency of magnetic reversals decreases as slip is decreasing. Since the hysteresis losses are directly proportional to the frequency of the hysteresis cycle to which the rotor is subjected. The hysteresis loss at any slip frequency may be given as pH is equal to slip times of pH0. As similar to that of an induction motor, the power input to the rotor other than rotor hysteresis losses results in the electromagnetic torque developed by the rotor and the electromagnetic torque due to hysteresis produced may be given as as you can see the, his, the electromagnetic torque due to hysteresis is independent of the slip and remains constant from standstill to synchronous speed as shown in the figure. Similar to the development of hysteresis torque due to hysteresis action, there are eddy currents and hence eddy current losses are also present in the rotor giving rise to the production of torque due to eddy currents also. These eddy current losses in the rotor at standstill be PE0 at rotor frequency F and as the rotor accelerates and picks up speed, the frequency of rotor eddy current also decreases and become S times of uh, frequency at a slip S. Since eddy current losses are proportional to the square of frequency, the eddy current losses at any slip frequency may be given as PE is equal to S square times of PE0. As similar to that of an induction motor, the power input to the rotor other than rotor eddy current losses results in the electromagnetic torque developed by the rotor. And the total electromagnetic torque due to eddy currents produced may be given by this expression as shown. As we can see, the electromagnetic torque due to eddy currents is directly proportional to the slip and decreases linearly with the decreasing slip and becomes zero at synchronous speed when slip is equal to zero as you can show in this figure. So basically what we have seen is the torque produced due to these eddy currents is directly proportional to the slip between the rotor speed and rotating magnetic field. At the synchronous speed, the relative speed between the rotor and rotating magnetic field becomes zero. Hence eddy currents induced in the rotor body also become zero. So torque produced by eddy currents at synchronous speed becomes zero and now onwards rotor rotates due to torque produced by hysteresis effect only and at synchronous speed only. Before discussing the application of hysteresis motor, the difference between reluctance motor and the hysteresis motor must be understood clearly. Reluctance motor starts as single phase induction motor and rotor pulls into synchronism under favorable conditions. Whereas, hysteresis motor gets synchronized with any load on the shaft provided hysteresis torque is sufficient to accelerate it. Reluctance motor on the other hand has a tendency of rotor to oscillate before getting synchronized. Whereas, in hysteresis motor, the rotor and st stator poles lock together without any oscillation. In reluctance motor, the rotor is not, on, not smooth uh, so it is subjected to magnetic and mechanical vibrations resulting in noisier operation of motor. Whereas in hysteresis motor, the rotor is smoothly cylindrical. So it is not subjected to magnetic and mechanical vibrations resulting in extremely quieter operation of the motor. The most common application of hysteresis motor are in electric clocks and in other timing devices where absolute constant speed and quieter operation is required. 
These motors are also used for driving gyros. And since the operation of the hysteresis motor is extremely quiet, they are the best choice for sound recording and sound producing equipments. So that's all for this video. I hope it was useful to you. See you in the next one. Till then, take care.